Should SRAM Red access and force access groupos have a revised version to them? Definitely the time is calling for it, but in today's video, we're gonna be talking about why I think there's gonna be a revised version of these two groupos coming out soon and uh, what it should look like and what they can be done. Um, but anyways, my name is GC Performance. Thank you for checking out the channel. Uh, I want to kind of go over a couple of things about the look of SRAM Red and SRAM Force when it got launched, which was about 2018, 2000, it's almost been five years, if you guys can believe it, that a 12 speed electron grupo has been on the market for that long. Um, we're gonna talk about performance of it, the benefits of it, because it is a, it still is a great grupo and it's still a very performance grupo, but it just feels dated because we've had it for so long. Um, talk about the performance aspect of it in terms of like the goods, the bads of it, and then also what the pros use in terms of what the whole pro peloton's using and hopefully how SRAM can revise this grupo and turn it into what SRAM used to be. Because back in the day, 2009, 2010, those SRAM mechanical, SRAM red mechanical grupos, that's what I dreamed for. I dreamed for those grupos when I used to see those pros in the pro, pro peloton, like HTC High Road, um, Sagan on the Candale team. Those group sets, I wanted one of those for so long. So I wanna talk about what they can do to get back to it. But uh, we'll talk first about the uh, picture I have pulled up right here, which is the SRAM red shifter. So the SRAM red axis and SRAM force axis shifter has been out since 2018. It got released on the 2019, or it didn't get released on this bike, but it, this bike came out as a 2019 Specialized. Oh, let me pull on my camera, sorry guys. And we'll do this real quick. Bam, bada beep bop. Sorry, give me one second guys. I don't have the editing skills. <sighs> this is not expected. Oh my gosh. Okay, so 2019, we got introduced to this group of the SRAM Red 12-speed Axis. Uh, this group has been out for now. So if it came out in 2019, it came out in 2018, 18, 19, 20, 21, almost about four years now. It was a 12-speed wireless group. It's the first of its kind. Full wireless, no cables being ran through there. Very cool system with a 12-speed system that came out. Uh, and, and everyone loved it when it first came out because of the fact that it was new. Coming back to today's current age, there have been some problems with it that people have talked about. We talk about shifting lag. People say that it doesn't shift well going up and down, that it feels kind of sluggish, that it's not as quick as Shimano. Um, battery lifespan, because there's not a massive battery like Shimano, with these ETAP batteries, there are, there are pluses to them, but the minuses are they're a smaller individual pack, so they tend to run out of battery uh, quicker for the rear than compared to having one large power unit system. The plus to this is that you can swap this battery with this battery if you ever lose power to each one or. So that's the benefit there. Um, and also, I know a lot of you have heard of uh, chain dropping. Um, I don't get it a lot from my consumers, to be honest with you. I don't hear a lot of it. But also, we're not in a state that climbs a lot, so they're not shifting from big chairing to small chairing a lot. So majority of the time, it's just in the big chairing. But a lot of people complain that in the big chairing, it drops from the big to small. Now, it could be that they're maybe in the big and big, the big gear up here and the big gear in the back, and there's a lot of cross chain going on, and maybe they shift down and it drops. Um, needless to say, it shouldn't be done like that. But I've heard that they get a lot of chain drop. Um, so, but I don't know. Uh, it, it, that that is, is what it is. But anyways, bringing to the Tay's current market, Shimano just released their new... 12 speed Durace Grupo with their new Ultegra Grupo. They made it lighter. They made it more efficient. It shifts quicker. They kept their same gear. Um, they kept their same gearing on there as well. They just added one gear to the middle. They didn't go to the 10 tooth on the bottom of the cassette. And also, they made it shift faster. And uh, yeah, I mean, they basically took a Grupo that dominated the market or dominated the Pro Peloton for so long, Shimano 91000, and they just revised it. And this is what I'm, uh, this is why I'm saying the SRAM should do this with Axis Group O because this Axis Group O was great. Now, bring it back to this year, they release SRAM Rival, which in my opinion is one of the nicest group sets out for the money, for everything, but they revised the hoods. And this is what brings me to this assumption that they're gonna make a whole change to the four since the red. Because usually when a company releases something, a product, they wanna kind of have it fall suit all the way through. There should be no real changes to it. So my idea was that they dropped the rival ETAP axis, like this shift right here, uh, for the reason of to see how everyone reacted to it and then maybe bring some changes to the force and red. 
in my opinion, I actually enjoyed this because SRAM Red back in the day used to be known for having really small hoods. Uh, they used to be known for the lightest group sets on the market. And they used to be known for how sh fast and, and quick they shift. If you, you hit that paddle, it snapped down. You threw three gears at a time, it went up and was efficient. Um, so I was a really big fan of this new revised look of the, of the shifter hoods. They also seem to make the rear rail a little bit more sleeker. And that's what I think they need to do. In my opinion, this now looks bulky. And it... This might just be hindsight, and, and it's probably unfair for me to judge them on something, a product that was so new to its time, but now it feels dated. But that's just what uh, our society has pretty much done to us. We became very spoiled, and we get used we get new, used to new things every three years or four years or so. So this now looks dated, and I think that they need to make this a little bit less clunky, a little bit less bulky. And also, they need to pull back this kind of shifter hood on here. Let me get my ugly face out this way. We'll do this actually in my opinion pull it up pull it up and pull it up damn it um in my opinion it just looks big it looks obnoxiously big it doesn't need to be that big sram shimano has just proven that shimano has made a wireless shifter itself with a reservoir inside of here and doesn't need to have this big massive hood now I've had heard people love this. I've I've heard from bigger riders that they enjoy this bigger hood because it feels more natural to them. Uh, it, it just it feels more comfortable to them compared to a smaller hood, so that's what they prefer. But I've always, like I said, whenever I associate SRAM Red or SRAM Force, it's always been a smaller hood. Like for example, um, let's see if I have one of these, like this, back in the day. This was a this was a SRAM red group set, I think from like 2009. But look at look at the hoods. Look at how aesthetically pleasing these look. Please go up. Please just work one time. Give me Okay, enhance. Okay, dude. But okay. Oh, my computer broke. What the hell? Advertising like crazy. Dude, get out of here. Look at how aesthetically pleasing these look. Smaller hoods, sleek, look good. The paddle doesn't look bulky. Everything about this group set looks amazing. And that's what I want SRAM to get back to. I want it to be that group that people want to ride. They choose to ride it. Um, and yeah, so what I think to needs to happen, and who am I? You know, I'm just, I'm just a guy who can barely hold up a bike that weighs 16 pounds and my arm shakes when I hold it up. By the way, I do work out. Okay, but what I really do th think that that SRAM needs to do, they need to actually take the SRAM Red and SRAM Force shifters. They need to revise them to look a little bit more like the GX system, make them lighter. They need to bring down the weight of the rear derailleurs, the front derailleurs, and also their cranks. Whether or not, I don't know how you do that. Maybe you get a smaller battery for that. That lasts longer. Maybe you put more money into... I have no idea. I'm not smart. I'll be admit it, but I can tell you what I want and what I hear from consumers. I work in a store that I literally get consumer feedback, feedback from viewers like you, consumers who buy the product, and also from other shop mechanics. Um, from a standpoint of a mechanic wise, SRAM Red 1000% is the easiest thing to build because there's only two wires. There's no junction box, there's no DI2 cables, there's no battery in the seat post, blah, 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 blah. But from a consumer standpoint, all I hear from consumers is that they want to shift a little bit faster like SRAM, like Shimano, and they want to uh, not have chain drop. So what I would think is that maybe there's some kind of coding or some kind of something inside that motor that I can do over like a firmware software or OTA over the air update that they can maybe make the motor work a little bit faster. I have no idea. That's just some kind of assumption that I can make to maybe do it. And then again, revise this shifter hood, bring it down. It's been about four or five years. I don't see them making a 13 speed Grupo. Take this 12 speed axis, learn from what I was telling you and just make a smaller Grupo, make it lighter than Shimano because SRAM was always known to be the lightweight king. These are the rim brake version of SRAM Red 12 speed axis. And look it, they look clean. That's what you need to make your hydraulic after, which I think is doable. You don't need to have this massive reservoir up in those hoods. So, and what brings me to my last point, I know this might be a little bit sporadic, but what brings me to my last point is in the Pro Peloton, it used to be dominated by SRAM riders. Again, like I said, when I was growing up, 
I watch AC, HCC High Road. I watch Specialized Riders. I watch Trek Riders. I watch um, the Candle Riders. Uh, in the Pro Peloton, majority of all these people I used to watch, Pater, my boy Pater, look at this. Look how cool this bike looked. This was a Cannondale with a 10 speed limited edition SRAM Red. That's what he preferred to ride. Now, I know there's sponsorship dollars would come into play where Shimano sponsors a team or, or SRAM sponsors a team, but I got a feeling some, these, some of these riders or some of these teams have some kind of outpoint with it or, or output with it. And I think that if they made it light enough and quick enough, they would choose this stuff again because the majority of the Pro Peloton back in the day used to run this SRAM 10 speed. Look at how cool that stuff looked, man. The green, the custom green. Mark Cavendish, my boy used to run a SRAM on there as well. Now, if you look at current day Pro Peloton, look at that bike, that looks badass. The massive uh, cable housing on the back just for a statement piece. That was a clean bike, first gen bench. Um, now, the current day bikes, were they all dominated by pros? Every single bike in the Pro Peloton is pretty much on Durace, except for the Canyons. And I think Trek, which current year last year was on SRAM, from what I know. I think everyone else, maybe there's some teams in there with Campy, but majority of every other team in there, we go here. Scott, Durace, Factor, Durace, Mapelli, Durace, Villiers, Durace. Um, maybe they want it for reliability. Like I said, I know that some of this comes into sponsorship dollars and stuff like that, but if they prefer reliability, and now with this new 12-speed Durace where they have this super plus glide, where they they say that when you're putting down power, when you have pedal to the power, your chain will shift more efficiently than with not as much power. So standing up out of the saddle, you don't have to let up at all and that thing's just going to go. So, yes. I would love to see SRAM come out with some kind of revision to this. To this. I think it should be sometime soon. I haven't heard of any of this stuff. I know I work in a bike shop, but I have not heard of any of this stuff. But there, in my opinion, I think there'd be no reason for them to go ahead and remake the whole shifter hood when they already had a current layout of a shifter hood design that worked. The SRAM Red worked. The SRAM Force worked. There's no issues with it. But they went ahead and revised anyways. And they made it, I think, in my opinion, it's quieter. It's a little bit snappier, in my opinion. It, it could just be me aesthetically or me uh, placebo effect, like feeling it. The SRAM, the SRAM Rival shifters hoods feel better in my hand and they shift better in my hand. My opinion. But I think they need to take this, revise, and move it to SRAM Red and just make it lighter. But anyways, that's for me ranting. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I didn't even realize I was wearing a Shimano shirt this entire time. I like bias as all hell. But, yeah, I, I mean, and, and again, I, I can't take for granted how cool this stuff was out. We had a 12-speed wireless system since 2019, 2018 that really led the way in the market and they really paved the path for to push Shimano become semi wireless and stuff like that. So thank you again to SRAM. And I also thank you again to SRAM for having components available during that whole pandemic time. SRAM Red is still a dominant force out there. They are still lighter. They're still a very light component and they give you a lot of options in terms of gearing what you can do. But I want them to get the weight down a little bit. I want them to revise the shifting speed and maybe work on that flat top chain a little bit, make it a little bit less noisy. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, let me know what you guys think about what I said and if I'm wrong or not. And if you could, I never asked for this. Leave a like and comment. Um, I guess it helps out with uh, the videos. I appreciate it. Oh, fuck. Bye, guys.